So telomere shortening isn't just implicated in aging. And so those people that are, are uh, going through a, a debate in their mind about should I take this drug even though there's a risk of cancer if the only thing I'm going to do is try to control my aging. Well, there are a lot of diseases that, that are affected by telomere shortening that aren't, that aren't aging. And I've got a whole list of them here. I won't have time to go through them all. But these are all diseases that are affected by short telomeres. And, and one, thing, one case is bad things happen when telomeres get short. We don't want short telomeres, but there's really nothing bad about long telomeres. So finding a way to keep telomeres long should help uh, these diseases. And a lot of these diseases are serious enough that people will gladly risk the uh, cancer, take the cancer risk. Now, for those of you that, now, my company is, a, is not a uh, money-making scheme. We, my investors are really interested in trying to find a cure for aging. But for those of you that, are, that do want to see a revenue angle, all these are markets and very, very big markets. When we have a, a drug that turns on telomerase, there's a lot of possibility for generating revenue uh, in these markets. And then there's also possibilities of early revenue from research reagents. Scientists working in a lab have a big problem of their cells always senescing before they're finished with their experiments. This, having this drug in growth media would allow them to continue working with their cells. We figure this is, a, we estimate this to be a $250 million market. But there's also pets. A lot of people would like to extend the lifespan of their pets. <clears throat> and especially, th think about C and I dogs and guard dogs, a lot of training goes into these animals and they end up dying very young and so they have to train more animals. Extending the lifespan of those would, would be great, but just pets in general, people would like to extend the lifespan of their pets. Race horses. Races horses are another thing where people would like to extend the lifespan of their horses, especially when they've got studs that they're, they're breeding. Now, Surprisingly, a lot, of, a lot of research has been looked at to see who, what kind of animals age by telomere aging. And amazingly, only humans, dogs, cats, and horses have been confirmed to, to age by uh, telomere shortening so far. Most other animals don't have any telomere shortening and use other mechanisms for aging. We estimate the pet, two, two different studies estimate the pets to be anywhere from a $5 billion to $115 billion market. So with that, I'd like to thank you. And uh, any questions? And let's say, also, you can also go to www.cureagingordietrying.com, uh, learn more about our research. David. Uh, Bill, I, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Very uh, inspiring and, and excellent presentation, Bill. Thank you. I had a question about your timelines. You had about three years to get ready for the FDA process. And then about $100 million, I think you said, from seven to 10 years. Is that we have three fair? years to get into preclinical. Into preclinicals. Yeah. And then I think you said seven to 12 years uh, on top of that yes. for $100 million. If it weren't for the FDA and the regulations, and maybe the pet or the animal market has something to do with this, if it weren't for the FDA regulations, how long would you be able to clinically prove this, in your opinion, in the human model? Uh, if somebody was interested in taking one of our drugs uh, before FDA approval, I think it, well, even I, I think it's going to be a long time to really show that it affects aging. My my benchmark is to run a seven-minute mile when I'm 130 years old. That's when I know I have found a cure for aging. Um, it's like maybe maybe we could be giving drugs to people that are in their 90s and see and measure how long they live. That might take 10 to 20 years to really get an answer on that, but. Really, it's a tough question. We don't have an answer for it. How about biomarkers? Do you have biomarkers that might give you an idea? There's no good biomarkers. In fact, I think telomere length is the best biomarker of aging there is, exists. That's why I recommend everybody get their telomeres measured. Get a baseline now. Yes. Um, Bill, could you compare telomerase expression in cancer with what you are trying to achieve or have seen with supplement or, or the chemicals that you're using, the actual amount of telomerase expression? I didn't understand the question. Okay. Um, in cancer cells, is it fair to assume that there's a higher level of telomerase expression than there is in uh, normal cells that have telomerase activation or cells that have been telomerized with supplements or chemicals that you're testing? Okay. Well, most cells that have, that, that are non-cancer cells that express telomerase do it at such a low level that they really have no effect on telomere length. Um, <clears throat> now, cancer cells do produce enough telomerase to, to make them immortal, and that's what I believe is the reason cancers turn on telomerase is to extend their lifespan, otherwise the cancers would die of old age. Um, 
Well, is I it, guess I'm asking is the, the ideal, if we're looking for a telomerase activator, the ideal telomerase activator would be something that's transient and mild compared to what's going on at, at the higher level. Yes, we, we definitely want a transient. Okay, we, we want to be able to shut it off if somebody starts seeing signs of a cancer that, and, and if that cancer is not producing its own telomerase. If the drug is producing the telomerase in that cancer, you want to take it away. But I'm not, I'm not convinced that we want to do mild doses. I, I'm, I'm thinking that, that higher doses might be better, but we don't know. It's like, I, in fact, I don't want to pretend like anybody knows the answer to that question. We're going to just have to find out. But TA65 works at a mild dose, and, and some of the questions that was just David Kekich could, was asking, maybe we'll get that answer from TA65. I know I've been taking TA65 for three years now, and I'm very really looking forward to seeing whether or not I start looking younger than my identical twin brother. Right. Uh, of course, I have the obligatory footnote to add to the beautiful animation that you have, which is a cartoon of telomere shortening and yeah. then the flying angel that comes in. I would never show that at a science presentation. I've got <laughs> whole different slides for that audience. But, yes. but you need to comment on the architecture of yeah. the tip of the telomere to say that as a molecular biologist, you know it's a very complicated business. And you know, otherwise the telomere, well, all, all of the chromosomes could attach to one another with the enzymes that repair damage. Yeah, well, let me, if, Steve's exactly right, and, and for the scientists in the audience, uh, the question is, why would a length of a telomere have anything to do with aging? And it has, it, we, there's models, there's no, nobody knows the answer to this question yet, but one of the models is that it possibly bends over, and just like it folds over onto the chromosome, and just like enhancer sequences affect uh, promoters that are like 10,000 bases away, telomeres might be acting like enhancers and bending over and interacting with genes on the chromosome. But even at the fold of where the, the uh, telomere is folding, there might be interactions there. And when the telomere gets really short, that, that fold disappears. So that's a, those are models, but uh, uh, whatever. Next question. Two quickies. Carlos? Okay. Um, you know, if you want to get your telomeres uh, length determined, SpectraCell Corporation out of yes. Texas will do that commercially now at about $365. So that's commercially available. So anybody can... Well, most doctors, or a lot of doctors, can do the spectra cell test, so it's a pretty uh, easily uh, test that's easily available. And, and we're having spectra cell do a lot of our telomere length measurements. I think they're doing a really good job. Uh, it's right now the only place where you can get your telomeres length measured. And I do believe that telomere length is going to become one of the best biomarkers of aging and overall health that we've ever seen. So. I recommend everybody get their telomeres legs measured as soon as possible, and spectra cells the place to go. One more quickie, Dr. Walkoff. Yeah. Okay, a couple questions about cancer. First of all, we know that cancer cells turn on telomerase, but we don't know that turning on telomerase necessarily induces cancer. Right. So I want to know if any research has been done showing that an activated or turned on telomerase will induce cancer, and secondly, have you in any way elucidated the mechanism whereby cancer cells do activate the telomerase? Okay, well, the last part, last part of that question is every way imaginable, okay? Not very much research has been done looking at what causes telomerase to turn on in some cancers, but the few cases, it's either been a, a virus has inserted itself upstream of the telomerase promoter, just derepressing the, uh, so uh, essentially make an alternative promoter for expressing it. There's also been a lot of cancers where the telomerase gene has been uh, uh, duplicated over and over again. I think HeLa cells have like 15 copies, and that must be titrating out a repressor. And the first half of your question was, what was the first question? Uh, I said that uh, cancer cells produce telomerase. Has any been, anything oh, yeah. been done to okay. indicate that? Lots of, lots of research has been done, but they're all flawed. They all have, not, they're not flawed experiments. They, they all can't really get the answer because we really need to have a drug before we can really answer that question. For instance, most of the experiments have done by inserting the telomerase gene into the cells, but the simple fact of inserting a DNA into a cell can cause cancer all by itself. And so most, there's been four papers, most all mouse studies, where, that have reported that telomerase uh, increases the risk of cancer. Those, the last one was published in 2004, and three of those were by the same author, and that same author has published several papers since then saying the exact opposite. So it's, 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 it's confounded by other things causing cancer, such as DNA integration. So we need a drug before we can answer that question. Thank you, Bill Andrews. Thank you.